Right then, so a few weeks back, I was just uh, browsing online, bored as I do, looking for some bits and bobs, thinking of, you know, something else to build. And I come across these on the RS Components website. Now they have a few valve amplifier transformers on there by this company, this uh, Oxford Electrical Products. <coughs> These are not listed as valve output transformers, they're just listed as an audio output transformer. Power rating it, three and a half watts. Very basic data sheet, just giving you some configurations for input and output tappings to give you an idea of impedance matching. Single ended, and they're just rated at about 12 and a half Henry's at 100 hertz. So I'm guessing that's the full power rating and then it's going to decrease from there. So they were relatively cheap. Uh, I just thought I'd buy a set and see what I could do with them. Now, I was originally thinking valve amplifier, but valves like nice transforms. They're very high output impedance devices. They're not particularly keen on running poor transforms if you want to get good quality audio out of them. This is the kind of thing you would have found in a cheap valve radio, well, not cheap cheap because I've seen a lot smaller than this in some of the real cheap old valve gear, but sort of Danzet tape recorder, mantle radio kind of thing, single ended pento job. So I figured what can I do with it? Well, when the idea of using it as a valve stage after some deliberation was rejected, I figured I'd make a single ended transistor amp. So I was gonna go full FET, so I was going to use a FET here on the input and a MOSFET on the output. Anyway, digging around today, sods would have it, couldn't find my MOSFETs, couldn't find my JFETs. Well, whilst looking for something else, I've come across some IRF 740s, which would have just about done it. The 840 would have been better because when this turns off, this swings up in voltage and the 840's got a higher breakdown voltage on it. So... If it was ever driven into clipping, the 840 would be more suited to running the amplifier. But I had to, as you can see by my scribblings, I had to adapt the plan on the fly. So bias net was added to bias just a BC546 on here. The voltages were then drawn on for what I want for a transistor stage and a uh, it's random, it's just a random transistor I found. It's like 700 volt rated transistor out in my parts box. So that is the amplifier. So I shall if I find a flat piece of surface to put this bit of paper on. Fully professionally made video as always. So run through it quick. First part is a capacitance multiplier. So I've got about 28 volts DC coming in off of a 18 volt winding on a transformer it's rectified and smoothed this then basically 10,000 ohms to 20,000 ohms drops a couple of volts and then there's a capacitor here so this capacitor the attenuation is the same as what you'd work out is 10k in parallel with 220k in a 470 ohm resistor that then feeds the base of this transistor so this is just outputting as an emitter follower but because the base voltage is held very, very steady at very low ripple, the output from it is very low ripple. That's then to feed the front end of the amplifier, because if it's going to hum, it would be, you know, if you had any ripple on the supply, it would just be induced here. It would hum like a bugger. So that's the first part of power supply. There's then just a small bias network that applies about 2.25 volts to the base on this BC546. It's about 1.6 volts across the one kilo ohm resistor here, so about 1.6 milliamps. I then need about 10.1 volts for the base of this BD139. This is the collector resistor for this transistor. It's actually now 10K. So this, if it was just single-ended, would have a gain of a roughly 10, slightly under, but so close you'd call it a gain of 10. 
There's no voltage amplification going on on this transistor. It's just a current buffer. It isolates this transistor from the output stage. It stops the bias current from the base of the output transistor and its associated base resistor from having to pass through this network. It takes all the strain off the input transistor. So yeah, the BD139 pulls the base sources current for the base and then as that turns off the discharge path for any charge carriers can go through the 1k resistor pulls the base up and down just under ohm resistor on this just is a base stopper the capacitor here applies negative feedback to the output stage only so as frequency rises this becomes lower and lower impedance and again the amplifier drops off Output stage is biased with a 220 ohm resistor to 40 milliamps, about 8.8 .8 volts. And the capacitor, that's a weird value, that's just because I'm going to use like three 470 microfarads in parallel. We'll only have a single 470 on it in a minute anyway. But so single ended, it goes through the output transformer. The output transformer connects, it's actually, I drew 250 volts on here because I lose about 40 volts across the primary and the output transformer through DC resistance. So I've actually got about 290 volts supply or so. I'm getting about 250 volts at the collector of this transistor. So then coupled through the transformer, that just represents where the speaker low would be. Then one end of the transformer is tied to zero volt. The other end goes through a 10K resistor, it sits in parallel with this 1K that applies negative feedback back to the emitter of the input transistor. So here it is on the breadboard. Here's the capacitance multiplier. That's this section up here. The input stage is here, which is obviously this bit. BD139 driver is there, which is this bit. And then this is the output stage of the amplifier. Output transformer. And then obviously I've got a wires coming back for feedback and the other ones are going off up to the speaker, sat on top of the speaker. Power supply is a bit of a Frankenstein mashup. It's two 18 volt transformers. One's mains coming into it. The 18 volt winding is going off for a bridge rectifier and a capacitor to give me my low voltage, this one here. But the AC winding is then also feeding back into the 18 volt winding of a second transformer and the primary is running reverse is a secondary and that's going for a rectifier capacitor and that's then going to the transformer and 0V to give him a high voltage for the output transformer. So I'm going to turn it on and measure some voltages, see what I've got. So I don't know if you can just hear in the background that's Kasabian playing, that is actually coming out of this speaker. So the amplifier is running. I can't run it for too long because this heat sink's a bit small and it starts to get very, very hot. But if I get my meter, let me just prop this up. So, so the voltage on the HT, uh, 286, the voltage DC, 253, so you see I'm losing about 43 volts across the transform primary. Just get me scale down, oh, step me scale down a bit. My raw DC voltage going in, 26.7. After the capacitance multiplier is 24.4, so I'm losing just over about two and a half volts there. Now the input stage, so yeah, 9.19. So yeah, I'm just probing here, making sure you can see I'm just trying to match up some of my voltages to what I calculate on there. And final one being then, if I come across my output resistor. Oh, gone off the scale there, wrong setting. So, come on. A little bit low, but it's nothing major. It's, uh, Jimmy, I need a breadboard knock-up. I'm going to be... Oh, I don't know, four maybe so milliamps slightly down. It wouldn't matter unless I was trying to pull the amp hard anyway. So, 
Yeah, it works. It's a single-ended transformer-coupled transistor amplifier. And it actually sounds pretty damn good. The If I pull the negative feedback loop off, you can hear the difference in volume there because all of a sudden it's then running at full gain. So it loses all its bass, it loses all its definition. It's not actually that bad sounding. It's not overly distorted. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure now. I, I knocked up a more basic circuit yesterday with just a single MOSFET. I was literally driving the gate of a MOSFET directly with the Chromecast. And it sounded terrible, but obviously the Chromecast was going to be struggling driving the gate capacitance. And I couldn't really apply any feedback or anything. This is going to be a far more linear circuit. So... I don't know if I want to build it as a full FET amplifier or stick as a bipolar junction amplifier. Mm, I don't know, I'm going to have to think on that one. Some other notes, things I've noticed. I've done this a few times now. Rather than trying to source high voltage output, high voltage transforms with, you know, with a secondary voltage, which is sort of 240 volts or whatever, you can get them, but they're really, really expensive. If you just buy two cheap £15 transformers and do this, you've got double isolation from the mains, and you get the voltage you want. I've always noticed that it comes out far lower than it should be, and that is because if you ever look at a transformer when it's unloaded, the secondary voltage is far higher than it's rated at. They rate the secondary voltage for loaded up. And of course, when you run that in reverse, you'd need a far higher secondary voltage to get the primary voltage up to the 240 it should be at. So when you couple two transforms together, you always get a lower voltage output out of them than you should do. Now, if you rectify 240 volts, you should get 340, whereas I'm only getting about 290. And if I loaded this up, it would drop even more. It's just something to bear in mind if, if you ever feel like doing this. And I would say, disclaimer... Do not try this. You need to know what you're doing because once you start playing high voltages like this, you go across. If I put my hands across there in the zero volt thing, I'm I'm killing myself. So it's actually isolated. I could touch it with my finger if I wanted and wouldn't get a shock at present because I'm not in contact with both nodes of that voltage. But it's one of those play with fire, you will get burnt. So Anyway, so what am I planning to do with this? Well, I have a metal case and all the other bits and bobs I need to turn it into an amplifier. So I'm going to... don't think I'm going to bother knocking up a proper circuit board. I think I'm just going to put it on the perf board. You know, the, the stuff you just sold. This stuff. Just here. That stuff. But yeah, I'm just sitting here listening to it. I can't believe how good it sounds. It's got pretty good frequency response. Something's worth noting, you try and run transformers with a capacitor in series with the primary and you get a real odd bass frequency boost. Uh, this is going to have some weird phase shifting going on because this capacitor isn't big enough to keep this where it needs to be down the frequency range. Um, it's just the joys of transformers. That's why I had such a weird one here. If I'd I was just thinking I want about three because if I have one I'm somewhere around like the 60, 70 hertz mark. It's going to go, it's going to be peaking. But anyway, yeah, so that's that's all for today. Just a short little video on the next up and coming projects. Like I say, I think I'm going to stick bipolar junction transistor because I like the way this sounds. It sounds far better than it did with the MOSFET when I tried it yesterday. It's going to take me a few seconds to shove a MOSFET in here and try it, but I kind of feel it's just not going to work as good. More gain here, and because it's such a, it's only a two-stage design, as like I said, there's only a gain of about 10 here before you apply negative feedback. It's going to be a lot of gain here because the capacitor holding it, it AC potential, it should be very little modulation of voltage across this resistor-capacitor parallel combination here. And the output impedance is relatively high, so there should be a good chunk of gain here. But however, because of the turns ratio in the transformer, it's then reduced again in voltage. So it's not 
as it stands at the minute, it's not supplying a massive amount of negative feedback. But it's good, it's stable. You know, that's the other thing with transforms. You start trying to apply huge amounts of feedback like you would in a normal transistor design, you're going to start running into stability problems. This at present is stable, it's quiet, and it's got the gain just about where it wants to be for an amplifier. It doesn't need a massive amount of signal, isn't overly sensitive. So, yeah, dead simple circuit. I quite like it. It's There's two active gain compartments, uh, components, sorry, and one current buffer and an output transformer. Uh, you see, dead simple. So I think I need to get cracking on and build this into a case. It's measuring the temperature of this. I've had it running whilst I've been recording this video, and that is getting quite toasty. A transistor is probably going to be near 100 degrees. Now it is only dissipating 8 watts, so it's probably still within its safe operating area, but it's not going to be nice for it. So yeah, a couple of transistors on a nice big heat sink. We certainly don't want. 84 degrees on the heat sink Celsius that is you really don't want to be going above about 40 and even that's hot so I'm gonna turn this off before it blows up in my face by the way that music you can hear again is it yeah it's working it's working good <laughs> 